Hi there. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Today we are making this hexagons in royal blue and turquoise. I made it for my son when he was a teenager and he loved it. So, yes, if you want to join me and you can see the edging is so simple, really just one row of single crochet just right around. Beautiful. Easy peasy. Boys don't want that much fuss. So it is so soft because I used pure gold and lovely. Okay, so if you want to keep me company, let's get going. For this tutorial on the hexagon blanket, you're going to need your scissors, yarn needle, 4mm hook, and you know I like the plain kind, and I'm going to make this with you. Um, I used the pure gold, white, royal blue, and turquoise. Now let's just have a look at this. This is the L double knit, pure gold, quality that's as good as gold, they say. Well, it is incredibly soft and my first choice for a blanket. And 100 gram balls, 4 millimeter needle, uh, not needle, hook, crochet hook recommended, and 258 meters per 100 gram ball. Now I need to mention that um, for this tutorial I could not find after lockdown uh, royal blue, the royal blue in pure gold. So I replaced that, I've um, substituted with Charity double knit, just the normal, plain old double knit, right? But the amounts of yarn that you'll need is correct. But if you're going to substitute, I just need to point out this. Um, make sure you have enough meters. For instance, a 100 grams ball of pure gold has 258 meters per ball, right? Come, focus. But on a 100 gram ball of charity, there is only 233 meters. So that's 25 meters less. But now you must remember that the charity is also uh, quite affordable, less expensive than the pure gold. Uh, but the pure gold is, this charity is soft. This, this, Royal blue I've got in my hand is very soft, but the pure gold is softer. I don't want to say this is soft and then it sounds like the charity is not as soft and hard and whatever, because this is soft to the touch. As I touch it here, this is very soft, perfect for a blanket, but the pure gold is softer. And it's about 44 rands to 52 rands a ball for the pure gold doesn't uh, depends on where you're going to buy it and the charity goes for about 17 to 23 rands a ball so you can see the charity is about half the price of the pure gold so if you're going to pay for this blanket round about i think 800 rands just under 800 rands to make this blanket in pure gold and you're going to pay less than 400 rands to make it in charity so it's up absolutely your choice in which yarn you want to make it i made it in pure gold but for this tutorial i'm just substituting the pure gold royal blue which i could not find at i went to four shops to look and i couldn't find it anywhere so um so let me just mention if you're going to make your entire blanket in this uh, charity you'll still need five balls uh, of the turquoise charity double knit for the center and you'll just have less left over because you, you're still going to use four plus balls for the center for 44 hexagons you'll need closer to nine balls of royal blue so still buy still buy you know um, nine balls and then you'll need closer to three balls of white so I would recommend you buy an extra ball of white. So buy four balls of white. But I'll put that um, at the end as well, that information on one page. So um, 
if you're going to make it in pure gold, which is what I did, and you want to duplicate the blanket I did, um, for these four, one, two, three, four, five rows of turquoise, I use four and a half balls, so obviously you'll buy five. And for the next five rounds of royal blue, you'll need nearly eight balls. And for the white half double, cro double crochet edging um, to each of the 44 hexagons, you'll need just over two balls of white. So I, you know, bought three and then I used the rest for the leftover white to sew in the hexagons together. And of course, the whole blanket needs a single crochet border. So let's start. This is how we're going to make it. I start with a slip knot like this. Hold. Like you know how to make by now. And then chain six. Like this. One. Two. Three four five six and slip stitch into the first one to form a ring and chain four one two three four chains then make three double crochets one double crochet two double crochet and a third double crochet then chain one chain one and another set of three double crochets let me just get some yarn here and it is one two, three double crochets, one chain and three double crochets. See the thing uh, with the pure gold is it tends to split when you're working with it. And I've said in previous uh, tutorials, then one chain, another, another three that's one, two, three. Now another three double crochet cluster. I've said in previous tutorials, if you can live with the splitting, manage it. Then this is a beautiful soft yarn to work with. Good for any blanket, for anything that you want to make. One chain and another three double crochet cluster. two crochet double crochets and a third one let's just see what we've got <clears throat> there we go that's the the four chains we, we put on the beginning is three chains that serves as a double crochet one chain space three double crochet cluster one chain space three double crochet cluster one chain space and so we go on. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And we're on to our last one. We need six. So one chain space. Now remember that that counts as a one double crochet. So I need two double crochets. One, two. And then I'm just going to slip stitch uh, in the top. There's this one space. So you know how I work. I don't count 
from the bottom up. I count from this way to this way, from left to right, because it's a process of elimination. If that is the top of that double crochet, and that is the one chain space, then that must be the top of my three chains that serves as a double crochet. I find that just much easier than climbing up the tree from the bottom, you know. <laughs> okay, now this is what I've got. A little, tiny little hexagon. There you can hardly see your one chain, uh, one chain space. Like that. Now, we need to get into the one chain space. So you go in there. Yarn over, then make a single crochet and another two chains that will serve as a double crochet. Another chain that it will be your one chain space. Now you're going to put in the same place a double crochet. So that is forming your corner. Now you'll put a double crochet in the top of these three double crochets, one in each. Let's do that. One double crochet. There we go. Two double crochet. Three double crochet. Now I'm at a corner, at a one chain space, and the way I do my corner is one double crochet, one chain, and one double crochet in the same space. See? There you go. That's what it looks like. Let me just get rid of this little end that I've been working in all along. Okay. Now, let's do another side. So now I'm going to do on top of each double crochet, a double crochet, get to the one chain space, and I'm going to do one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet. So let's just do that. And it's going to be one, two, and three double crochet. And the corner is one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet in the same space. There we go. Now work one into the top of the next three, one double crochet, in the top of each of the next three double crochets of the previous row. So you're just building on. Then we're coming up to a corner. Let me just get some yarn. into that one chain space we're going to make one double crochet one chain and another one double crochet there we go work one double crochet into the top of the each of the next three double crochets there we go beautiful color i can see why my son loves it corner it's one double crochet one chain one double crochet there we go just one into each of the next three the top of each of the next three there we go as we've been doing corner coming up and one double crochet one chain one double crochet there we go. Some more yarn here. Okay. Now we've made progress in that one. First one, top of the first double crochet, I put a double crochet. Top of the second double crochet, I put a double crochet. Top of the third double crochet, I put a double crochet. Then I'm just going to slip stitch. Now again, if that is the top of that double crochet, 
and that is the one chain space, then this must be the top of my three chain double crochet post. See, it's coming on. Now you can see your sides, your six sides of your hexagon, much clearer. Now we go, as we did in the previous row, into your one chain space. You're going to go in, yarn over, make a single crochet, and two chains, which will serve as your double crochet. One chain in the same space, we're going to put one double crochet, and that is your corner formed. Now you're just going to work one double crochet into each of the double crochets as it presents itself. See, we started off with three double crochets. In the next row, we had a corner, which meant on that side, an extra double crochet, one in each of the previous, and an extra one. So three became five, is going to become seven. So you're just going to add two on each side every time. So you can, and that is basically the corner that is adding a double crochet. So now you're just going to make one double crochet in each double crochet and that is how it goes beautiful then when we get to the corner one double crochet one chain one double crochet then just a double crochet in each of the previous rows double crochets as it presents itself. Just get some more yarn here. There we go. Beautiful. And here we go, making a corner, one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet, all in that one chain space. Of the previous row and then a double crochet again in each double cro top of the double crochets of the previous row as it presents itself great and there we go and then I'm you're just going to continue like this one double crochet one chain one double crochet until you've done, let's see, six rows, one, two, three, four, five, five rows, five rows. So I'll meet you at the end of row five. Okay. I just want to say a word of caution here. I find if I, as I go into the corner and I make one double crochet, or one chain space, and one double crochet, you can easily possibly skip that one if you're not careful and want to go into the next one. So just look out for that because I have um, twice had to go back on my track and hey, I've skipped, I missed one here. You know, isn't it strange? I, I was noticed this week, you know. I, on the internet and so on they all talk about yarn stores but here in South Africa we call it wool shops a wool shop I mean you'll tell someone I'm going to the wool shop I mean they they only you don't mean you're going to buy 100% wool you want acrylic or whatever you want cotton there we go last end of our last row that is the top of that double crochet that's my one chain space so that has to be the top of my three chains and that is the end of my lovely see how nice and flat it lies i don't like it when it curls up one two three four five rows and i'm just going to snip that leave enough so that when you want to work that in you can do so Okay, and now join with the royal blue. There we go. Just 
here we go and make a slip knot like i did so many times before this is how i like to join you can join some people like to just make a knot pick another corner not that same corner i'm just going to pick this corner in the corner i'm going to make a single crochet just take that straggler end around to the other side another two chains that's now my double crochet one chain which is my single chain space and one double crochet in the same one chain space to form a corner so here it was three double crochets five seven nine eleven for those of you who are counting you should have eleven double crochets per side and then the one chain spaces in between now you're just going to continue and remember don't skip that one it's so easy to do you know now you can work in sometimes i work in the end on the back only halfway because i'd like to take the yarn needle and just work it in in the opposite direction so that it's really sturdy and wanted to come out halfway okay like this just pull it that way and continue when i make a whole blanket i know remember when i made this blanket um he, my, my son is now 19 and i made it for him when he was 11 so what's that eight years ago i like to make a production line you know so i'll do all the turquoise centers first so it becomes mindless so i can watch a movie and i know i've got to do 44 and there you go then i'll tackle the okay there we go into the corner one double crochet one chain one double crochet in the same one chain space don't miss that first double crochet okay then i'll um have this whole pile of you know turquoise small hexagons and then i'll tackle with the royal blue then we'll only do the royal blue just until you know if i've done 20 and i'm tired of royal blue i might or if i'm tired of the, the turquoise i might do you know um the the royal blue tired of the royal blue do some more of the centers turquoise <laughs> depends on what you prefer do you want to do every single block finished or do you want to do it like a production line like i do it let me know in the comments what your preference is There we go, that's our corner. And I'm using the, taking that straggler, I'm going to work it, I'm going to crochet it in. So it's in the corner, one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet. There we go. And in that beginning, one double crochet. Now I noticed when I did the other five hexagons for this tutorial that it feels like um but you're going to see now i'm going to show you when i get there like this wants to buckle you know buckle it wants to make a little but as soon as you lie it down and you just wipe over it once it's straight as anything no problem so i'm not sure if it's because of the way i'm holding it or what you know because my tension's the same anyway just a little bit of this straggler i'm working it in then taking it to the back and continuing with the royal blue and you're just going to do exactly what we've been doing with the turquoise but you're going to be doing it for four rounds i always you know say rounds when i must say rows and say rows when i must say rounds so but you know what I mean, eh? You're intelligent. You only need half a word to catch on. There we go. Corner, one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet in the corner. And we are just going to continue. 
So I'm going to see you at the end of your four rows of turquoise. And remember, don't skip that first one like that. Okay, I'm going to see you at the end of your four rows of turquoise. I just want to show you by tilting the camera. This is what I mean. If I hold it, can you see how it sort of buckles? And I'm not sure if it is because of the way I'm holding it, but if I lie it down, you see immediately there's nothing that pulls. So I don't know why it does it. See now. Now there's no buckle. Anyway, I'm ending off row four. So let's just find that one chain space, and then that is our three, the top of the double crochet, slip stitch, and snip. And that's the end of the four rows. Let's just do this. Lovely. Now we need a row of white, half double crochets. Now where is this white? There we go. White. Little slip knot. I just make it like I was taught at the age of five. Like that. Okay. Pick another corner. Not that one. Any other corner and... I'm just going to make a single crochet. Let me just tilt this camera, otherwise, just a moment. Otherwise, it keeps on focusing on the background. Okay, so I've got my slip stitch on my hook. Go through, yarn over, pull it through, make a single crochet. One chain. And I'm just going to take the straggler in this way so I can work it in and then yarn over go through the same one chain loop yarn over now instead of now, now I'm just going to pull through all of them and that is a half double crochet because with the double crochet you would have gone with a double crochet just our normal little double crochet. You would have gone yarn over, through, yarn over, through. Nope, this is not what we are doing. We are doing half a double crochet. It's the, the clue is in the name. <laughs> through and through everything. And yarn over. Now again, look out for that first one. Yarn over. And you've got the three loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through all three of them. So now, after you've done all those double crochets, you need to focus a bit to be doing half double crochets. Otherwise, you might find yourself making double crochets because when you're in autopilot. And that's just what you're going to do here. You're going to put a double crochet into every, the top of every, you're going to put a half double crochet in the top of the every previous double crochet. So you're actually going to do everything the same except it's not double crochets, it's half double crochets, half double crochets, there we go, beautiful, everything is still the same, but we're ending off, I love it when I come to what I call the cherry on the top, I've done all the work and Hopefully enjoyed the process. <laughs> I would imagine, especially if you're making something in a color that you love. I can just imagine making this blanket in a different color. You know, shades of pink. Instead of that center turquoise, 
What if it was white and the next four rows were pink? You know, so many things one can do with hexagon. There's your one chain space. So you're going to put in a half double crochet, one chain and a half double crochet, which is pretty much what you've been doing. Instead of all the double crochets are half double crochets. And you're just going to continue like this all the way around. One half double crochet in the top of each double crochet of the previous row. Your corner is a half double crochet, one chain, half double crochet. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll see you at the end of this round. There we go. Okay, and we are about ending off. Hey, I nearly made a single crochet. This is a half double crochet. <laughs> habit. Habit, habit, habit. There we go. And we're, every time it splits, I'm reminded that I'm working with pure gold. There we go. And I'm just going to put a slip stitch in that. There we go. Slip. Now it's time. See how it slightly buckles? And I just, that's it. It's all I do. And it's straight. Don't know why it wants to buckle in my hands. Anyway, now all that is left to do is to sew these, um, to make a yarn needle. And we're going to sew this together and then we need to do the end. So this, I'm just going to show you how I did it. Okay. So you can start anywhere, but this is round about what we're going to do. We're going to do it like this. Okay, like that. And now it needs to be sewn together. So I am definitely, you know, you take a piece. Um, I've, I've um, sewn this together, but there are many blankets that I did that I actually crocheted together because now you see with sewing it together you need to take a piece of yarn it can't be too long and then when you've run out of yarn you need to take another piece okay so uh, I'm going to do it like this let me see that's the corner right I want to be in that one chain space wait not this way from the bottom from the wrong side up because i want to make a knot on the wrong side there we go there's my little piece then i'm going to go like this where are you there you are i'm going to go through like this and i'm going to make a knot on the wrong side I can work that bit in later. Then, if you know the name of this stitch, you're happy. You know, I'd be happy if you told me. So now I'm coming in from the back. Just coming in there. And one of each. There we go. The white is very bright, very difficult to see, but it's one in each. Maybe if I come closer, it's easier to see. Maybe if I come closer like that, you know, it's just, will it focus? I'm taking to top which is like a V I'm going into the opposite one which is like a V 
maybe I should do a little piece in another color so you can just see what's happening. You know, I think, okay, let's do that. I'm just going to like take a piece of yarn in turquoise because that's close at hand and show you what I do. And then you're just going to do that with your entire blanket. And remember, we put it in rows. What I did is I'm doing this. I came out there and I'm going in there and out. So I'm just doing this. In there and out. See? So that's what I'm doing. But in white. So it is beautifully hidden. You won't see it. You won't see it. It's going to look gorgeous, gorgeous, and flat. So that's what you're going to do. Just sew them all together, and I'll show you what I do when I get to a point or a corner. And then, okay, so go ahead and sew that together. I'll see you at the corner. I was just thinking about this turquoise, sewing it together with turquoise. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. That's the thing about art. Is there a wrong way and a right way to draw something? No, I don't think so. I think it's preference, isn't it? So crochet, in my view, why must it be sewn together with white? This is my preference. I'm showing you what I did in my blanket. But I have blankets where I've sewn it together with a contrasting yarn because I wanted that effect. And it looked beautiful. So that's what I like about crochet. It's, you know, you can create beautiful things. No one can really tell you you're doing a wrong thing because it's you expressing yourself through this form of crafting, this form of art. To me, this is art. I remember my daughter. I'll tell you about my daughter now. Let's just get this. Okay, see, I've done, I've done the one. I need to join this one. So now I'm going to... I'm in that one chain space and that one chain space. I've gone in that one chain space and I've come out there. Now I want to go into this one chain space and come out again in my one chain space so that they are aligned. There we go. Okay, now what I wanted to tell you about my daughter is she's studying art and while she was in, I think it was matric or grade 11, one day she came home because I'd explained to her that to me, when she paints with paints, to me painting, a crocheting is like painting. I use the different yarns, put it together, see what looks good, use a color wheel see what looks even better and to me that is like making a painting and um, so she came home one day and she said mommy today we learned that now how do you pronounce that van Gogh van Gogh he painted with wool he used wool to determine which color he will use he had little pieces of wool <laughs> and when the teacher said he did that, I told her, my mother does the same. <laughs> I must laugh because, I mean, shame. My poor child is now comparing me to, to the great Van Gogh, Van Gogh. So, and here I am crocheting. <laughs> but it just shows you, that's what the child thinks, eh? 
Okay, so I'll see you at the end of this. Just keep on connecting all the sides and then I'll see you. I just want to show you I'm working in at the back. This was one of the tail ends and I have now, you know, I just go like this all the way back because I've worked it in that far this way but I'd like to do it that way. If you've watched any of my previous tutorials you'll see that I like to work in something three times um you know to and fro because to me so i was taught that's the proper way to do it and then it won't come loose see how this yarn splits it's just um amazing come like that through and the third time there we go and snip that off that and I've got to work in the other ends let's see what else has to be worked in beautifully flat beautifully flat everything is beautifully flat in this sample of this blanket let's just see here here we have there we go just work some of it in that was now that is an end where we end it but this one you see that is the one chain space that is the one chain space I just want to finish it off there to make sure that the two one chain spaces must be aligned and let go to the wrong side and work it in there like that don't have a lot of yarn to do that but we're just going to go to and fro a few times and then this set uh, listen to those hardy dolls it's amazing like this fantastic like that worked in but not that one I'm not working in because I want to crochet in just making it a bit shorter and that is also something that I want to crochet in let's just get rid of what we don't need here yes so now I am just because this is a sample I'm going to take Maybe I should take the turquoise again, but on my blanket, I'm just snipping off what's not needed. Okay, later on, I'll work in those final ends at the back. All those on the side is just now, I'm just checking the side where I'm going to crochet. Now, I'm going to do it with turquoise, I think that shows off better. But my original blanket is. I put a white border around it, so I think I'm going to do a few stitches in turquoise, just so we can see what's happening. Slip knot like usual. There we go. Now you can choose anywhere on your blanket where you want to start. So I'm just going to start at a, you know, let's say I'll start there. Okay, there we go. And single crochet all the way around. So I've had my little slip knot on my hook, went through yarn over, make a single crochet. Now I've got the straggler in here and focus. And it's just going to be a single crochet. And that is my. single crochet and I can make my one chain and a single crochet and then remember don't skip that one that one wants to hide but 
that I think it's important. You should do with that one. And then the next one. Come on, give me some yarn. There we go. And yes, don't get in the way. I want to tuck it away like this. Just a single crochet into every stitch as it presents itself and in the corner that was now you know at a point you do what was done in the previous row which is a single crochet one chain single crochet and then you just work every one and then I'm going to work to that point and this is not a point, it's a dip. Let's call it a dip. And I want to show you what we're going to do when we get there. So we are just going to do this. One. Sing. Now you see that little straggler end? It's getting in the way. So let's just take it away. And it is a single crochet. And a single crochet all the way. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now you see, this is not what I did. I um, put a white border around. But what stops you from putting a turquoise or a royal blue border around? Nothing. That's bring out the art artist inside of you and pick whichever one you fancy. But this is easier to see, I think. This turquoise is much easier to see. And now we are getting to... There we go. One single crochet in each. That is just... To go right over that. You know, that is that little bit where you do a slip stitch at the end. So just be careful. That is definitely, here I'm in the corner. So I'm just going to hold the white straggler end and make a single crochet. And a chain and a single crochet. And a single crochet. And you work in the end, like that. The, the white end is just going to be worked in. Then at one point you fold it. There you go. And I'm just going to continue all the way to that dip. All the way to the dip. I just need more. see that's what it looks like now remember you, yeah I've already said that don't have to say that again I'm using turquoise just because it's easier to see now we're just doing a single crochet in each there we go Okay, I'll see you. This is what the dip looks like. I'm so sorry for knocking the camera here. Just see there. Let's, let's just come closer. So that is my one chain space and a one chain space. So I'm going to go into that one, yarn over, into the next one, yarn over, yarn over, and pull through all. So it's like you're decreasing a stitch. Then just continue. This is now in a dip, as I call it, a dip. It's not a point. It's where the two meet. And that's how you're, what you're going to do. See, it's when you're going into a dip. And then it's going to be a point and a dip. And a point and a dip. <laughs> 
and you know what to do at a point at a point it's going to be at a point it's going to be single crochet one chain single crochet follow all along to the point where it's again the same single crochet one chain single crochet here comes a dip in a dip let me just get my crochet hook we're going to put into that one chain space into that one chain space and you're going to you're going to have your single crochet and just yarn over and put through again like you're going to do a decrease stitch so i'm going to meet you there again okay and we're coming to another dip as i call it and i'm going to put my hook into this one sorry for that on the camera and I put my hook into that one chain corner space and in the opposite one chain corner space and yarn over and pull through all then in the next stitch just put my yarn through so it's like I've decreased see so I just continue so it will look like you've decreased okay and that is what you're going to do all around and I'll meet you at the end and I'm coming to the end this is how you're going to end off as well a single crochet and just a single crochet there and a slip stitch see that little V a slip stitch into that little V run over and now you see the thing with this yarn is it tends to split there we go done and snip and I'm going to work that in lovely and tight Okay, when you work it in people don't even see that there is anything because I go to and fro three times so let's just go down and work this little one in and the rest any other ends that there is to be worked in and that's once and this is twice and and last time that is the third time I'm just gonna fetch it there don't want it to be bulging either but it's properly it definitely won't come loose nice and flat and snip it off there you go now this is what it looks like this is what it let me uh, adjust the camera just slightly so you can see right this is what it looks like it's going to look beautifully done there's your dips every time Treat it as a decrease and then a point is a point like you would normally make all the other times that you've made a point okay and that is that i'm glad you've joined me and kept me company if you've liked this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and i hope to see you for more thank you for watching bye